Curious about why Emily, a woman of 25, persists in playing the part of an infant? Welcome to Everdale, where mystery pervades the air in this small town. Here, amidst lush, verdant hills and charming cottages, resides our subject of interest, Emily. She is admittedly an odd spectacle, isn't she? Seen wearing oversized baby outfits, often found with a pacifier bobbing in her mouth, Emily spends her time enveloped in her fluffy toy companions. This sight leaves the townspeople puzzled, wondering what's going on. As we pan to the worried expressions of Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, Emily's parents, we see their perplexity. Despite their attempts to comprehend or rationalize their daughter's behavior, they remain mystified. The town's whispers grow progressively louder each day, yet Emily, lost in her world of plush toys and baby outfits, remains blissfully unaware. Next, we meet Emily's friends, Lisa and Mark, who have shared their school days, secrets, dreams, and numerous adventures with her. But Emily's infantile persona is an enigma they've yet to decipher. They've observed their friend Emily retreat into this baffling identity, becoming the town's unsolved mystery. The pressing, pressing question on everyone's lips, why does Emily, an adult woman, insist on living as a baby? Lisa and Mark are plagued by this question. They've spent countless hours trying to understand, trying to piece together the Emily puzzle. It feels like attempting to solve a complicated jigsaw puzzle with pieces that don't seem to match. But Lisa and Mark, their long-standing friendship with Emily and their deep affection for her won't allow them to let this mystery remain unresolved. Thus, we see a look of determination pass between them. They decide to dive deep into the mystery to untangle the enigma that is Emily. They embark upon a mission to uncover the secret behind Emily's incessant baby act and her bizarre presence in Everdale. As Lisa and Mark tiptoed into Emily's room, they unearthed a truth that would redefine everything. Their gaze on an antiquated, dust-coated diary concealed under Emily's bedspread. It felt like they had unearthed a buried treasure. However, instead of glistening gold and shimmering gems, this treasure revealed Emily's unspoken history and the explanation behind her unusual mannerisms. As they gingerly turned the fragile pages of the journal, they began to decode the enigma of Emily. On page, there were narratives of a forfeited childhood, of wars waged, and of a young maiden's strife. The inked symbols illustrated an image of Emily as a juvenile, not frolicking in the meadow or giggling with peers, but bound to a sterile infirmary cubicle, battling a unique and incapacitating disease. It was a heart-rending disclosure. There was a portal into Emily's yesteryears, a past overflowing with suffering and yearning. The last they were familiar with, the last who behaved like an infant, was just attempting to recapture the juvenile years she was deprived of. The oversized toddler attire, the soother, the plush toys, they were all integral to Emily's effort to revisit the instances she lost, to savor the purity and happiness her ailment had robbed her of. As Lisa and Mark consumed the text inscribed on the pages, their perplexity metamorphosed into cognizance. They could now perceive Emily through a fresh lens. She was not merely their eccentric friend who behaved childishly, she was a combatant, a warrior attempting to recuperate from the scars of past. Their hearts swelled with sympathy and compassion for Emily. They couldn't amend Emily's past, but they could facilitate her recovery and progress. They could assist her in rediscovering her forfeited childhood in a healthier, more rewarding manner. They could enable her to commemorate the milestones she bypassed, relish the pleasures of maturing, and accept her actual age. Harboring a newfound empathy for Emily, Lisa and Mark resolved to assist her in recovering her past. Thus, armed with a profound comprehension of their friends' battles and a resolve to impact change, they embarked on a quest to infuse joy into Emily's existence. As Emily navigated through the gaps of her childhood, Lisa and Mark hatched a plan to organize a birthday surprise. They were keenly aware that Emily had never felt the bliss of extinguishing birthday candles, making a wish, or being the star of her own day. They wanted her to experience these moments, the simple delights of childhood that her relentless illness had snatched away. So they called upon the people of Everdale, their community, for support. The news spread rapidly and the town showed no hesitation in rallying behind them. Everyone was eager to play their part, to bring a touch of joy to Emily's life. 
The village baker took on the task of creating a stunning birthday cake, the local florist committed to adorning the venue, and the town's musician was all set to play tunes that would warm the heart. This truly was a group effort, a reflection of the strong community spirit that Everdale was known for. The preparations were bustling, the atmosphere was thick with anticipation. The town square, the chosen venue for the celebration, was teeming with activity. Colorful streamers were strung up, balloons bobbed in the breeze, and a colossal banner that read, Happy Birthday Emily was raised high. Everyone was on tenterhooks, ready to witness Emily's glowing smile. Then came the party day, and Emily was guided to the town square, completely unaware of the surprise in store. As she made her entrance, a harmonious rendition of Happy Birthday filled the air. She stood flabbergasted, her eyes wide as saucers. She could see the cake, the decorations, her friends, her parents, and her entire community all gathered to celebrate her. The awaited moment then arrived. Emily stood before the cake, her eyes shimmering with unshed tears. As she blew out the candles, silence descended upon the crowd. It was as if time stood still, a moment of victory, of happiness, of healing. As Emily extinguished the flames on her very first birthday cake, she was swept up in an emotional whirlwind. It was the closing of one chapter and a powerful step towards a more gratifying adulthood. As the joyous celebrations unfurled, a moment of truth descended upon Everdale. Emily's friends, with gentle words and a tone of revelation, disclosed her past to the town. Their story, creating a surge of understanding and compassion, struck the townsfolk like a lightning bolt tearing apart the cloud of misunderstanding that had loomed over them. Suddenly, Emily's quirks, once perceived as oddities, were seen through a new prism of empathy and understanding. The once echoing laughter and whispers were replaced with a profound, deafening silence. This silence was not empty, but filled with understanding and empathy, a silence that held more meaning than any spoken word. It was a silent acceptance of their own misconceptions, and a silent pledge for change. Emily was no longer the eccentric outsider, she was one of them, a survivor who had weathered a storm and emerged stronger. Their empathy was not one of pity, but of respect. As Emily's past was laid bare before them, it was as though a veil had been lifted, their eyes, hearts, and importantly, their minds were now open. They finally grasped that to truly understand someone, you need to journey with them, walk in their shoes, or in Emily's case, her oversized baby. The impact on Emily was transformative. As she blew out the candles on the cake celebrating her first real birthday, she was swamped by a tsunami emotions. It was as though a dam had broken, allowing years worth of suppressed feelings to flow freely. Tears of relief, not sadness, carved their path down her cheeks. Relief that she was finally understood, relief she was finally accepted. As she looked around at the sea of faces glowing with genuine affection, she was filled with hope and courage. She was not alone, she was part of a community that cared for her, that empathized with her. The power of empathy, wielded by her friends and now the entire town, had transformed not just Emily's life, but the entire town of Everdale. A glorious proof of the strength of human connection and the healing power of understanding. As the days rolled by, we watched as Emily began to cast aside her childlike exterior. Just like a butterfly breaking free from its chrysalis, she emerged from the shell of her youth into the robust and dynamic woman she was destined to be. The days of oversized onesies and pacifiers faded away, making way for the maturity and grace that comes with adulthood. Her evolution wasn't only seen in her appearance, but it seeped into her emotions too. Emily was stepping into a new realm where she had room to grow, to explore, and truly be herself. She was finally stepping out of the shadows of borrowed time and living her age. Transition felt like a sunrise long overdue. Then, as she bravely stepped onto her new path, Everdale became an integral part of her journey. The town, having witnessed her at her lowest, now stood by her, admiring her resilience. It was a town that had once questioned Emily's peculiarities, but now admired her courage. It's its residents, each carrying their own struggles behind their daily smiles, found inspiration in Emily's bravery to face her past and embrace her future. They learned empathy from her story, and it left an indelible impression on the heart of every citizen. 
But transformation wasn't just a personal one. It was a testament to the power of community, friendships, and a woman's spirit that turns pain into resilience. In the heart of a unique tale unfolded, serving as a reminder to all that growing up sometimes means confronting and overcoming the pains of the veins. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye.